Right. Welcome, everybody. It is Tuesday, August 16th, 2022 at seven o'clock. We are here for the Lee School Committee meeting at Lee Middle and High School. Some of us are coming in through Zoom. We are in a virtual meeting room for Governor Baker's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. General Law uh, C30A Section 20. This meeting will take place virtually via Zoom. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Pursuant to Mass General Law C30A Section 20, I am hereby informing all attendees that a video and audio recording is being made of the meeting. Please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you. The mission statement of Lee Public Schools is to ensure students have the opportunities to develop the social, civil, and critical thinking skills to thrive in an ever-changing world. Brenda, could you do a roll call, please? Mr. Robin? Here. Mrs. Fisher? Here. Ms. Larman? Here. Mr. Nichols? Here. Ms. Strickler? Here. Thank you. All right, first on our list is approval of the July 26, 2020 Lee School Committee meeting minutes. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the July 26, 2022 Lee School Committee minutes. I'll second it. Any discussion? Brenda, can you do a roll call, please? Mr. Robin? Yes. Sure? Yes. Ms. Warman? Yes. Mr. Nichols? Yes. Ms. Strickler? Abstain. All right. Next up on our agenda is public input. Members of the public are invited to address the committee at this time. Issues raised will normally be referred to the administration or a subcommittee of the school committee. We have nobody in the public. That's a shame. All right. Next up, I would like to introduce our new student representative, Jacob Bianco. Welcome, Jacob. Hello. Are you ready for this? Very long. I am. I'm All hoping. Right. Um, All right. Tell us a little bit about yourself, my love. So, lover. my name is Jacob Bianco. Um, I'm a senior here at Lee, obviously, and I'm this year's student representative. Um, in February, I attended a Massachusetts Association of School Committee's Student Representative Summit in Worcester. Yep. Uh, the day of the Super Bowl was part of that. So for all Massachusetts, every uh, student representative joined and one place and we discussed um, you know, what's an effective way of communication and all different um, aspects of being a student, re uh, student representative. And I hope to use some of the stuff that I learned um, there to keep uh, the whole school committee well informed. Well, we appreciate it. Uh, will it just be you this year? Um, yes, bless you. unless I can't make it, which I believe I can make uh, most of the meetings. I do have a backup. Her name is Annie Payne. If I am put in place, I can run. Are you? Oh, you I know it's a former student. <laughs> <laughs> um, so are you, you are you sports? Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> um, I uh, participate in cross country and baseball. Um, I'm part of quiz team, student government. Um, and yeah. Oh, also National Honor Society. Fabulous. Um, yeah. So I'm really excited to be here. Well, thank you for coming, Jacob. I appreciate You're you welcome. coming and introducing yourself. And we look forward to hearing from you yes. every month. Yes. And like I said, you don't have to stay for the whole meeting. Yeah. You don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, next up, we have Superintendent Report with Mr. Richard. All right. Uh, thank you very much. And I will try to be as efficient with everyone's time uh, in this, our last meeting of the summer of 2022. <laughs> Uh, so let's get right into things. We've got a number of new staff, and I know I've been uh, celebrating their welcoming the last couple of meetings, but just as a review, Kelly Vosberg, Annie Fielding, Rebecca Cuevas, Amy McGovern, Ellie Kim, Brandon Pfeiffer, 
Matthew Albert, Jessica Trombley, Walter Alward, Martha Guinan, Katie Velas, and Madeline Doust uh, are just uh, the, well, the, those are the super majority of our new staff. Uh, I do have meetings with at least one more uh, candidate this week, uh, in which we will hopefully bring us very, very close, if not totally rounded out for our teaching staff. But I will remind uh, folks in the audience uh, who may be watching this recording when it's available that uh, we do still have openings uh, on our pair for our paraprofessional staff. So if there are interested uh, persons in our communities or surrounding communities who wish to be a part of our uh, Lee Public Schools um, staff, uh, please be encouraged to submit an application because we would welcome you uh, to join us. Um, MCAS graduation requirement. I, I really thought about leaving this as, as the last uh, topic, um, but I will, uh, I'll just address it because it's, it's important. Um, Yesterday, uh, the uh, Board of Education uh, voted to um, change the graduation requirements for students in the classes of 2026 to 2029 at a bare minimum, probably will extend beyond that. Uh, there were changes to uh, the English language arts requirement for grade 10 uh, and the science, technology and engineering test for grade nine and or 10, depending on uh, when the test is administered in various schools. Um, but it is an increase uh, to those graduation requirements, as well as a change to the educational proficiency plan um, uh, scores that students need. So what this means is, while our commissioner uh, a few years ago, when he came on board, indicated uh, that he um, didn't necessarily support more testing, uh, it seems as though the testing uh, may be increasing in numbers in the coming years, as well as the uh, needed scores in order to earn a high school uh, diploma. So it's disappointing uh, from an educational perspective uh, from my seat, certainly, uh, to see that the challenges that our students have faced over the number of years uh, are marginally, I think, being ignored. And I'm getting on a soapbox and I apologize for that, but it's frustrating to me uh, that with the challenges for us to service the social, emotional, um, and psychological needs of our students that we're now ramping up uh, the test scores that they need to meet in order to uh, earn a high school diploma. So if you want to find out more, uh, there is a link. And when this uh, presentation is made available on our website, uh, you'll be able to click that and go and, and, and check it out. Uh, so, uh, so we're, we're going to stay the course here in Lee. Uh, that, that much I can tell you uh, is that we are going to continue to educate students the way we have been doing. It's not going to change our practice. Our focus is on the whole child. Um, I believe that it's not going to change the outcomes for our students, that we are giving them uh, a complementary um, education that's going to allow them to meet these scores. Uh, but there, we know we have a number of students who year after year are right on the brink, and this is just uh, pushing those limits for those students a little bit more. So uh, a little bit frustrating, but we will get there uh, and we will stay the course. It will continue to work hard, and I'm sure that uh, you know Principal Brigenti uh, needs a, a nod because he uh, crafted a letter on behalf of the uh, high school principals here in Berkshire County and sent it off uh, to the board. Uh, whether it was right or not, I don't know, uh, but they did send um, a letter in opposition to the changes to the graduation requirements. Uh, but I guess um, we can't make everybody happy uh, in, in this instance. Uh, it is what it is. We will deal with it. We will move on. Uh, I will step off of my soapbox now and move on to the next slide. We'll all step off with you. Thanks. <laughs> New teacher orientation uh, will, will happen a week from tomorrow, August 24th. Uh, Michelle Polari, who's a teacher at LES, is the mentor coordinator. She'll be uh, running the event. It will be attended by administration for various parts of that um, that and we are, do look forward to welcoming those new staff members, many of whom were named uh, just a moment ago. Convocation. I am excited uh, to actually be able to hold uh, my first convocation since coming to the district. It will happen Thursday the 25th, beginning at 8 o'clock at LMHS. Uh, there is lots of uh, active professional development planned on Thursday and Friday, as well as the second half of the days on Monday and Tuesday. Um, but I can tell you that it will be educational, engaging, and entertaining, and not necessarily in that order. <laughs> uh, Friday this week, uh, football practice begins, and then the following uh, Monday, next Monday, girls soccer, girls volleyball, cross country, and golf will all uh, kick off their seasons, and we're excited for those student-athletes, and uh, much like Mr. Bianco, 
uh, and his cross country. I know he's already worn out his sneakers this summer. <laughs> he's, he looks like he's in remarkable shape. So uh, we're looking forward to a, a healthy, happy, and exciting uh, fall sports season. And then uh, what we're really here for is school and school begins Monday, August 29th. And just uh, so that people are reminded, it's a half day for students at LES and LMHS. Uh, it's a visit day for kindergarten students and families. So they'll be here from 9.30 to 10.30. Please be uh, mindful kindergarten families. There is no busing on Monday the 29th. You'll need to self-transport if you're participating in that visit day. But on Tuesday, August 30th, it's a half day for all students at both schools. And then Wednesday the 31st, a full day for all students and our school year will officially be underway. That's what I have to share with you guys tonight. There's gonna to be a lot more at our meeting in September, uh, but again, in an effort to be efficient with our time, uh, I'm gonna keep it to a minimum. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Mike? May I ask a quick question yeah. on the science technology all full testingness? Did it really increase by over 200 points? Yes, it did. Uh, before you basically just needed a uh, a skate by score, uh, and I hate to use that, but that the emphasis was not on uh, science, tech, and engineering. But they've they've ramped it up, so there's extra emphasis placed on that. Uh, mm -hmm. So our, our our science staff do have a little more work to do. Uh, perhaps that's where there's going to be, I think, some some hiccups. But uh, again, the level of education that's being delivered by our staff, I think, we're going to be set up well for success. Great, thanks. Any other questions? All right. Next up, we have our principal and director's reports. And first up, we have Tim Merton up from Lee Elementary School. Thanks. A uh, short one tonight. Uh, I just want to share a few things. Uh, letters were mailed home out to all LES families August 5th. It included a welcome letter, as well as other important information, including a free and reduced lunch application. A reminder that all families are asked to fill that application out, even though breakfast and lunch are free again this school year. Uh, as Superintendent Richard mentioned, a kindergarten uh, letter went out this week, and it will include information about the one-hour visit on the first day of school. Uh, so look forward to that. Uh, Jessica Trombley is our new uh, principal assistant. She's been with us several years as a full-time sub, and she knows the ins and outs of that whole school, so she's a really good fit and has hit the ground running. Uh, and faculty has been reviewing new math materials uh, as it's coming in and been taking part in professional development. And uh, we're working hard to enroll new students each day and we're preparing for uh, the September 29th start date, hard at work. That's what I have for you this first one. Fabulous. Does anybody have any questions for Tim? <clears throat> All right. Next up, we have Greg Bergenti with Lee Middle and High School. So uh, good evening, everyone. We also are ramping up for the first day in the opening days of the school year. Uh, everything is almost ready to go. Um, I'll mention that the gym project uh, reached another milestone. The floor refinishing has been completed. So we are at this point in time in a waiting game for the actual bleachers to be delivered, which we expect sometime in October. Um, so we'll have some flexible seating options <laughs> for volleyball games as we start the season this year okay. in, in June. Um, but it really, it's coming together really nice in there. It looks, looks great. Um, and I will just second Superintendent Richard's comments without going into detail on um, expressing my disappointment with the State Board's decision. Um, it's worth noting, um, if, you, if you do read through the summary um, in, their, in their agenda of the State Board, um, every educator that wrote in was opposed to yep. the move. And there were, I think, three or four um, organizations, uh, mostly representing businesses and, and the like, that um, wrote in in favor of. Yep. So, uh, but like uh, Mr. Richard said, we will do what we need to do to make sure that our kids are successful and get the diplomas. So, we move forward with that. So, thank you. Everyone. Thanks, Greg. Any questions for Greg? All right. Next up, Jen Norton with special education. Um, so we have the preschool uh, packets have gone home uh, last week, but we do have um, a few things that are still going to go home for preschoolers this week. We do have a three-year-old and a four-year-old program, and it is tuition-free, as we, you guys voted in last year, so thank you. Um, I've had several parents who are very grateful about it, so I just wanted to pass that along. Um, we have orientation on the 29th and 30th, and then 
our preschool is up and running fully um, on the 31st. Um, those schedules will be going out. And I just worked with Mr. Murtnock and our preschool teacher, Caitlin Riley. Um, we're changing up the morning drop off for the three year old preschool program just to make it a little bit more. Um, right now, they're getting dropped off in the main lobby of LES, so it's a little bit congested. So we're we're making some adjustments there, and those families will be shown that on um, orientation. But if there's any questions, they, people can uh, feel free to reach out to my office. And we are, as Mr. Richard said, very close to being um, fully staffed as far as teachers go. Um, we still have four positions open for paraprofessionals, some in both buildings. So if you know anybody who's looking to work, um, now would be a wonderful time to apply. Um, and we would love to have some applicants. Um, that would be great. And that's all I have for right now. Great. Does anybody have any questions for Jen? Thanks, Jen. All right. Next up, we have committee reports. Um, first up, we have finance committee. And Kirk is going to be our representative for the finance committee tonight. Thank you. So we did meet earlier um, and we discussed uh, a couple of uh, warrants that we had. Um, and the first one we discussed is the accounts payable warrant. Uh, Mr. Superintendent, do you want to? Uh, sure. We, uh, yep. Yeah, we have a, a summer accounts payable. It's, it's a little bit of a quiet time, but the nothing extraordinary here. We've got a lot of supplies and technology um, that need to be acquired to kick our school year off, uh, as well as some transportation licensing. Uh, and then some expense reimbursements for a total of $141,202.32. Thank you. All right, I will entertain a motion for the accounts payable. I will motion for the accounts payable uh, warrant for $141,202.32. I second. Any discussion? Brenda, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Robin? Yes. Mrs. Kishore? Yes. Ms. Warman? Yes. Mr. Nichols? Yes. And Ms. Strickland? Yes. All right, then the next payroll, or the next warrant was uh, payroll. This was superintendent. Yeah, again, very small uh, payroll total for you uh, this month because uh, it's been just a brief time since our last meeting, but this is a, uh, a regular payroll here in the amount of $75,953.16. All right, I will entertain a motion for the payroll. I move to accept the payroll at $75,953.16. I second. I'll second. <laughs> Any discussion? All right, Brenda. <laughs> Aaron. Mr. Robin. Yes. Mr. Sherrick? Yes. Ms. Warman? Yes. Mr. Nichols? Yes. Ms. Strickland? Yes. All right. Next up, we have the policy committee with our chair, Aaron Aubin. Thank you. And uh, the policy committee met on August 1st of 2022, and we approved four policies, which we'll go through. At this time, the first one that we approved was AC and on discrimination policy, including harassment and retaliation. This was an MASC update. I'm going to pull that up for you. All right. Um, so the the change the only change that we made or update that we made to this um, uh, policy is that we added a Title IX coordinator um, to the policy because there wasn't one in there before. And if I could, that's going to reflect the same information that's above for the Civil Rights and Title VI coordinator. So it could be Mr. Brigetti with his relevant information that would be inserted here should the policy be approved. Okay. All right. The next one. Oh, wait okay. a minute. Um, so I will entertain a motion to uh, accept this policy if anybody would like to make one. I'll make a motion to accept updates to policy AC, non discrimination policy, including harassment and retaliation, uh, and to waive a second reading. Do we have a second? I second. Any discussion? 
Brenda, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Robin? Yes. Mrs. Kishore? Yes. Ms. Larman? Yes. Mr. Nichols? Yes. Ms. Strickland? Yes. <laughs> okay, so now we have our next policy that was approved by the subcommittee is ACAD sexual harassment policy this is another MASC update and we just again add a title nine coordinator am I correct mm -hmm. for that yeah I will entertain a motion for the accepting the update to this policy if anybody would like to make one I motion to accept updates to policy ACAB sexual harassment policy and to waive second read do I have a second I second any discussion? Brenda, can you roll call us again, please? Mr. Robin? Yes. Mrs. Kishore? Yes. Ms. Larman? Yes. Mr. Nichols? Yes. And Ms. Strickler? Yes. Move on to the next one here, which is a new policy, which is ACAB R sexual harassment policy for harassment against employees. This is a new policy, which we have to read. I shall be the reader. Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, ACAB-R, Sexual Harassment Policy for Sexual Harassment Against Employees. The Lee School Committee and Lee Public Schools are committed to maintaining an education and work environment for all school committee members that is free from all forms of harassment, including sexual harassment. The members of the school committee include the school committee, employees, administration, faculty, staff, students, volunteers in the school, and parties connected to perform work for the Lee Public Schools. Title, I'm not good at this, 12, seven, is that seven. right? I'm not good at the seven. seven. I'm not, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm special. Of the 1964 Civil Rights Act protects workers in a school, Students are protected from sexual harassment under the provisions of Title IX C policy ACAB since courts have found sexual harassment to be a form of sex discrimination. If sexual harassment involves a minor student in a school setting, it can be considered a criminal offense under laws relating to child abuse. Effects on a victim of sexual harassment, a victim may frequently stay home from the workplace in order to avoid the harassment, i.e. more sick days taken. The victim's enjoyment of and pride in work is often determined, or, sorry, undermined or destroyed because of the victim is forced to spend time and energy fending off humiliating sexual advances or to deal with a hostile and intimidating atmosphere created by verbal harassment. There can also be physical and psychological effects similar to those experienced by rape victims. Professional counseling may be necessary. Sexual harassment is not, by definition, limited to prohibited con conduct by a particular sex. Further, the victim does not have to be of the opposite sex from the harasser. The victim does not have to be the person whom the unwelcome sexual conduct is directed. Finally, any adult may be a victim of sexual harassment by a student. Sexual conduct between staff and a student is prohibited and must be reported immediately so that that appropriate action may be taken. Sexual harassment is defined as Title VII of the 1964 Civil Rights Act defines sexual harassment as unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, and other verbal and physical, physical conduct of a sexual nature constitute sexual harassment when, one, Submission to sex, such conduct is made a term or condition of employment. Two, submission or rejection of such conduct is used as a basis for employment decisions. Or three, such conduct unreasonably interferes with work performance or creates an intimidating, hostile, or offensive work environment. Sexual harassment may include, but is not limited to, assault, inappropriate touching, Inintentionally impeding movement, comments, gestures, or written communications of a suggestion, suggestive or derogatory nature. Continuing to express sexual interest after being informed that the interest is unwelcome. Reciprocal action between peers is not considered sexual harassment. Implying or withholding support of an 
appointment, promotion, or change of assignment, suggestion that the core performance report will be reported, or a suggestion that probation will be filed. Coercive sexual behavior used to control, influence, or affect the career, salary, or work environment. Offering or granting favors or employment benefits, such as promotions, favorable performance evaluations, favorable assignments, favorable duties or shifts, recommendations, reclassifications, et cetera, in, in exchange for sexual favors. Other sexual harassment, harassing behavior directed towards management, staff, or students, whether committed by management, staff, or students, is also prohibited. Such conduct includes, but is not limited to, unwelcome sexual flirtation, advances, or propositions, unwelcome sexually explicit language or gestures, unwelcome touching that is sexual in nature, any unwelcome physical contact, the presence of unwelcome sexually provocative photographs, pictures, or other material, and telling of sexual stories or jokes, unwelcome verbal or nonverbal behavior about an individual's body that is interpreted as sexual in nature informal complaint procedure process for employees. In determining whether an alleged incident constitutes sexual harassment, the superintendent of schools or their designee will be vested with the authority and responsibility of assuring the process of all sexual harassment complaints are done in accordance with the procedure outlined below, unless the superintendent is the subject of the complaint. Any employee of the Lee Public Schools who believes that they have been subjected to sexual harassment is to report the incident to any administrator, the Title IX compliance officer, or directly to the superintendent. The administrator and or Title IX compliance officer is to contact the superintendent if they receive such a report. A written record of the complaint will be made by the party receiving the complaint. A separate file system will be maintained apart from personnel and grievance files of the employee regarding these complaints and as to all matters relating to the complaint. If the alleged harassment involves the superintendent of schools or a school committee member, the vice chairperson of the school committee will act as a compliance officer. If the alleged harassment involves the vice chairperson or the school committee, the chairperson of the school committee will act as the compliance officer. The superintendent and the compliance officer will look at the totality of the circumstances and the context in which the alleged incidents occur. They will attempt to resolve the problem by conferring with both parties in order to obtain a clear understanding of the facts. All matters involving sexual harassment complaints will remain confidential to the extent possible. At any phase of this process, employees may be represented, represented by counsel or union advocates since the process may result in the imposition of dis discipline by the principal or superintendents of schools. The superintendent and the compliance officer will work with all involved parties to try to create an agreeable resolution in a work environment free of harassment. Formal complaint procedure process for employees. A a complainant may file a formal complaint immediately or may do so after the superintendent and the compliance officer's efforts to reach a settlement using the informal complaint procedure have proven unsuccessful. The complaint will state clearly and concisely the complainant's description of the incident, and it will also indicate any remedy sought. The complaint must be signed by the complainant. The Superintendent's office will send the respondent a copy of the complaint within five working days after it is received. A separate file system shall be maintained as to all matters relating to the complaint. Confidentiality shall be maintained to the extent possible. The respondent will have 10 working days to respond in writing. This statement will contain full and specific references to each claim in the complaint admitting, denying, or explaining the complainant's allegations. The respondent must sign their statement, which will then be appended to the original complaint, complaint. Within three working days, the superintendent's office will forward both statements to the complainant and to the respondent. The superintendent or their designee will then fully compile and gather evidence to determine whether or not the allegation of sexual harassment is supported. 
After providing both parties with the opportunity to provide information, the superintendent or their designee will make a determination as to whether or not sexual harassment did occur within the workplace. If it is determined that sexual harassment did occur, the district will follow the relevant laws and contract provisions relating to the discipline. If the allegations of sexual harassment is against the superintendent, then the above school committee will be responsible for investigating the allegations as set forth above. Would anybody like to make a motion to accept um, the sexual harassment policy? I motion to approve and to waive second reading for policy ACAB dash R sexual harassment policy for harassment against employees. Do we have a second? I second. Any discussion? Brenda, can we have a roll call? Mr. Robin. Yes. Mrs. Kishore. Yes. Ms. Larman. Yes. Mr. Nichols. Yes. And Ms. Strickler. Yes. All right, the next uh, policy, again, that we approved on our meeting is IMG Animals in School Policy, which is an update. And the update is the line right there where it says, and comfort dog maintained by the League Public Schools. That was the update there we put in. Yep. And so the committee is aware this was brought to the attention of Attorney Dupre, who did support that uh, amendment. Okay. I will entertain a motion to approve this policy. I motion to accept updates to policy IMG, Animals in School Policy, and to waive the second reading. Do we have a second? I second. Any discussion? Brenda, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Robin. Yes. Mrs. Kishore. Yes. Ms. Larman. Yes. Mr. Nichols. Yes. And Ms. Strickland. Yes. All right. Next policy we're going to discuss is that was approved by the subcommittee is a JJF student activity account. This is a new policy which will be read. And I'm the reader. Okay, here we go. Student activity accounts filed JJF. Student funds may be raised to finance the activities of authorized student organizations. Student activity funds are considered a part of the total fiscal operation of the district and are subject to policies established by the school committee and the office of the superintendent. The fund shall be only for the benefit of the students and manage in accordance with sound business practices, which include accepted budgetary accounting and internal control practices. The superintendent shall ensure that annually all principals and student organizations receive a copy of this policy, as well as a copy of established procedures for controls of receipts and expenditures that meet or exceed DESE guidelines. In compliance with Massachusetts general law, the school committee, one, authorizes the principals to accept money for recognized student activity organizations, which currently exist, or as from time to time may be revised. All funds received for student activities must be deposited into the student activity agency account and no funds shall be directly deposited to a student activity checking account except for the student activity agency account. Number two. Two, authorizes the town or district treasurer to establish and maintain a student activity agency account or accounts, which is to be audited as part of the town's annual audit. The interest that is earned on such accounts shall be maintained in the agency account and distributed annually among the student activity checking accounts as directed by the procedures established by the superintendent. Number three, authorizes student activity checking accounts for use by the principals with specific maximum balances established annually for each school by vote of the school committee. Payments for expenditures shall be made whenever possible by check, debit, or EFT directly from the student activity checking account. Reimbursements to personal credit card holders shall require the prior authorization of the superintendent. Authorization for student activity checking accounts shall be restricted to the principal and superintendent or treasurer. Student activity checking accounts shall be audited annually in accordance with DESE guidelines. Number four, directs principals to provide the treasurer with a bond in an amount agreeable to the treasurer. Number five, shall annually, prior to the start of each school year, vote to establish or change the maximum balance that may be on deposit in each student activity checking account. For accounts with maximum balance limit, limits that exceed $25,000, the school committee shall consider in accordance with 
GESI guidelines that an audit be conducted by an outside audit firm every three years. Every three years. Graduating class funds. Okay. Yes. I'm just looking for the period. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. I got your period here, Betsy. <laughs> um, graduating class funds. Funds held on behalf of graduating classes are to be held within the student activity checking account for the high school. Such funds shall be designated by the class's year of graduation. Once a class has graduated from high school, their funds should be removed from the high school student activity checking account no later than two years from the date of graduation. It is the responsibility of the class officers to arrange for these funds to be removed from the high school activity checking account. When requested, and once all outstanding financial obligations of the graduating class have been met, the remaining balance should be removed from the fund by check transfer payable to the class of XXX. Checks payable to individual members of the graduating class are not permitted. Should the class officers not request to have their funds removed from the student activity checking account within two years of their graduating, the funds will be forfeited by the class and transferred into the general sub fund portion of the student activity agency account. These funds will then be allocated by a vote of the school committee. Class officers should be given a copy of this policy during the course of their senior year to ensure their knowledge of their obligations to perform under this policy. Inactive student activities. When a student activity ceases to be active for a period of three years or more, the principal or other authorized administrator shall require the following actions. One, obtain written notice from the faculty advisor or student officer that the activity will cease to be a viable account. If unable to obtain such notification, the principal shall request to close the account from the school committee. Two, identify in writing all assets of the student activity. The disposition of any assets shall be determined by the school committee and may not benefit specific individuals. Number three, annually notify all students of the required actions if an activity ceases to exist. Student activity deficits. Individual student activity accounts are not permitted to be in a deficit position. Whenever a deficit deficit the deficit exists that is not the result of timing, the superintendent shall recommend remedial action to the school committee in a timely manner. Note, DESE audit guidelines for student activity checking accounts require an annual audit. In regional districts, these accounts may be part of the annual audit by a third party auditor. In municipal districts, the audit audits may be conducted by a district or municipal employee, but not by the principal, treasurer, superintendent, or any authorized signatory on the accounts. Districts with large numbers of schools may rotate the schools through the audit process. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Would anybody like to make a motion to accept this policy? I motion to approve. And to waive second reading for policy JJF student activity accounts. Do we have a second? I said second. <laughs> Any discussion? Miranda, can we have a roll call? I'm sorry, is that the second? You can give it to Betsy. Mr. Robin? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Ms. Lerman? Yes. Mr. Nichols. Yes. Ms. Strickland. Yes. Trying to spread the love here. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. All right. Next up is some old business is our Lee School Committee, our rubric. So I am going to share my screen, maybe. Oh, look at that. It worked. Okay, so we have now filled out this rubric three times. Um, so I put in what our uh, September of last year, January of this year, and August of this year results were. Um, this time we only had five of seven of us fill it out. The last two we had seven of seven. I'm just going to let you know that. So right off the bat. Um, so uh, it looks like right now, we are actually looking in better steed <laughs> on the goals response um, because we are the uh, green and orange are actually better performance. I don't have my cheat sheet in front of me, um, are better responses than the blue and red. So if we're answering in the green and the orange, it means we're we're looking better. Does that make sense, everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, 
So that's a good thing. You all read the responses if you filled it out, so you should know. Oops, did I go too far? No, nope, I didn't. Okay. All right, so this is the one for the operating pro protocols. So this one we've made significant gains on, I think, in our uh, responses. So originally we were uh, mostly red, a little bit of blue, so not looking great in our operating protocols, um, which means, and this is one was re really looked at whether we were working as a team. Um, and so last September, we weren't. Um, in January, we were getting better, um, but now we're looking pretty good. Um, it looks like we're working, we're working well, which I think is great. Um, this question was about meetings, whether we were keeping to our agenda, whether you guys had the information ahead of time, um, those kind of things. So uh, last year, it was uh, sort of all over the board. <laughs> Same thing in January. Um, but this time we're more sort of in the green, a little bit in the orange, still a little bit in the red. Um, so we're getting better. We have a little bit of work to do on that one, I think. Um, the monitoring one, um, this one was looking more at whether we were looking at um, setting measures, whether there was um, data being shared. I will tell you, I was a little surprised at the responses on this one because I thought it would be better given the fact that we just spent so much time developing a strategic plan. Um, I thought our responses would be better on this one. So I was a little shocked on this one, I must say. I expected it to be more oranges and greens. And then this one was community engagement. Um, and this one I also expected to be a little stronger. Um, so it was more red and uh, orange. I expected to be sort of more orange and green again. Um, so it looks like we have some more work to do there. So we have more work to do on our community engagement and we have more work to do on our uh, what was this one? monitoring. Um, so those were the results. So we need to do these again in about four months. So in January, um, I will ship them back out to you again and hopefully we'll see some a little bit of improvement. Questions on that? Nobody filled up the comment section, even though I put it in there, um, which was okay, I guess. Um, so anybody have any questions on that? I do, I do appreciate the comment section, even though it wasn't used. <laughs> um, please keep it in. <laughs> I'm not going to change the number. Right, thank you. Um, unless I won't take things away. If anything needs to be added, I'll add it on, but I won't take anything away from it. So it's good to see. How we're progress are we moving forward? Yeah, I think it'll be. I think it's helpful to keep putting them up there. Um, it, it will end up with multiple slides. I think <laughs> because I don't think I can fit, fit. I'll end up having to take the little key off of there next time and put the next one on there. But I think it's helpful to see how we. I think we. I definitely think we've made progress. The thing that that I the one that made me the happiest is the teamwork one because I think we've come along. I personally think we've come along while as working as a team. So I was really pleased to see that one. So that's where we are. Thank you for letting me share, Mike. Absolutely. All right. Next thing on there is we've got some ha handbook updates. Tim, let's hear what they are. All right. We'll write down the list for you. Uh, other than the usual date time, personnel changes, and school council member updates, I submit the following for your approval as changes to the LES handbook. Uh, any reference to parent throughout the handbook should be changed to parent slash guardian. Uh, remove the COVID-19 face mask and hand washing policies on pages two and three. Change the dismissal time from 309 to 310 on page seven. This is to reflect the change that's in the uh, new contract this coming year. Under the safety security section, add a sentence that says lockdown drills occur at least three times per school year. Uh, change the LES school council meeting dates from the first Monday of the month to the third Thursday of the month to match what we did last year and what we intend on doing this year from page 10. Add a reference for the online absence reporting form to the description on how to contact the school to report a student absence on page 11. This is something we're trying this year. We're going to be using a Google form um, to allow parents to fill out information that automatically populates into a program for us and prevents the need to have them call the office and have somebody you know, do it manually. 
Uh, add in section three under actions concerning truancy, tardiness, and excessive dismissals, a re reference to a warning letter that is mailed to parent guardians of students whose attendance falls below 80%. Uh, remove the bullet point under section three that references the choice of dropping a student's grade by 5% due to excessive absences, that's found on page 10. Uh, add a K, K to two and three to six section in the grading scales section. There's a four point scale system that's used for grades K to two and the current 100 point scale system in the handbook will be identified as the three to six grade scale. That's found on page 12 and 13. Under section D in the academic performance section, remove the line, no dates have been selected yet, and add MCAS dates will be communicated to families via email and posted on the LES website once they are released by DESE. That's on page 13. And under expectations of the amount of time spent on homework, add kindergarten zero minutes on page 14. Uh, under health services in section A, replace the word referencing the school nurse from she to they, that's on page 18, and update any policy amended by the Lee Public School Committee during the 816-22 meeting that is found in the LES handbook. <laughs> I just threw that in. I love that. Very Thank nice. you. <laughs> uh, okay. Would anybody like to make a motion to approve the changes to the LES handbook as read? I'll make a motion to approve the changes to the LES student handbook as read. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Miranda, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Robin. Yes. Mrs. Kashur. Yes. Ms. Larman. Yes. Mr. Nichols. Yes. And Ms. Strickland. Yes. All right, great. Go. So we have uh, three significant changes to the student handbook, other than um, you know the minor ones like Tim had mentioned at the beginning of his um, thing. The first is to remove the entire section on important notes due to COVID-19. We had all the masking and all of those things in one section. So we'll remove that section. The second has to do with uh, grade reporting um, timeline. So I'll explain this one just a little bit. Um, as many of you know, several years ago, we began the process to move towards competency-based grading. And as part of that process, we uh, changed to semester-long grading for our year-long courses. Um, in other words, at the start of quarter two, the student's grade continues. It doesn't reset. Okay, And at the start of quarter four, the student's grade continues from the previous quarter. It doesn't reset. Um, we still issued quarterly report cards, however, which kind of confused the issue for some parents and students um, because they felt like that grade was in a report card, therefore it's locked down and it is more important than it really was. Um, so um, our plan this year is to only issue two report cards at the end of each semester, one in January, and one in June. However, we're going to increase progress report so we send home um, to one at the end of every month. So parents and guardians will actually be receiving a more frequent notification of how the student is progressing, um, but there will only be those two report cards, um, one in January and one in June. The only exception to that are the middle school elective courses, which operate on a quarterly basis. So they'll still obviously be quarterly. The third um, change, uh, this actually came from the student government last year. Um, it's revising um, one, two sections of the honor roll. The first one didn't come from student government. It's that we will only issue honor roll in, in January and June at the end of each semester instead of quarterly, because we only go to issue report cards in January and June. The second change, which did come from the student government, um, there was concern that a very small number of um, mostly seniors who took AP science courses didn't qualify for honor roll because we had a um, minimum number of grade courses of five. Um, and so they were very small. I think last year it was actually three students who otherwise would have been on honor roll, but they weren't because of that rule. They might have had two non graded courses, like an internship and um, senior varsity sports. Those are pass fail, so they don't count. Um, the extra period that AP Sciences meet had them only have four um, graded courses. 
Um, so to fix that, we would actually um, propose to change the minimum number of graded courses for honor roll from five to four. Um, again, it's a, hand, a, a small number of students each year that that affects, um, but we think it's important that they receive that honor roll uh, status. That's it. All right. I will entertain a motion to accept the LMHS handbook changes as read. It's you. Go. I'll make the motion you then to accept the Lee Middle and High School Student Handbook updates as read. We have a second. I second. Any discussion? Brenda, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Robin. Yes. Mrs. Fisher. Yes. Ms. Larman. Yes. Mr. Nichols. Yes. And Ms. Strickler. Yes. All right. Future business. Our next school committee meeting is September 13th, 2022. I would like to thank Kirk for making all our motions this evening. <laughs> you are a rock star. The party going. <laughs> <laughs> and our last uh, item of business is adjournment. And could somebody other than Kirk make the motion, please? I have motion we adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All right. Brenda, can you make a roll call, please? Mr. Hoffman. Yes. Mrs. Fisher. Yes. Ms. Warman? Yes. Mr. Nichols? Yes. Ms. Strickler? Yes. We are adjourned at 752.